This is a review of the WG T1. Or the tone, baby. It's the tone. Okay, so uh, you've got a single dynamic driver here with some Tesla magnetic driver patented technology. I don't know what it means. With an eight core silver plated OFC cable. Quite a nice cable, I might add. This is not an unboxing, I'm just showing you the box. I didn't record an unboxing because I wasn't actually planning to make a video for these, but due to popular demand, this is what the subscribers demanded in the next video, and this is what you got. All right, so, uh, yep, straightforward, pretty nice little box there. Ta da! There they are. Yeah, I know it looks messy. I know it looks messy. Man. All right. There they are. Pretty snazzy. Pretty snazzy. Physically, they remind me a lot of the TFC Queen IMs. And the cable reminds me of the TFC Balance 2M. Is there a connection? Who knows? Who knows? Let's get some conspiracy theories. Is there a connection? Leave a comment down below. So here we have the earpieces. You can see this sort of wavy texture on the face plates. Nice matte finish. They are, of course, metal housings. Very durable. Like I've been, I'm generally pretty rough on IEMs when I'm testing them. I just uh, shove them in my shirt pocket in and out of there all day long. I beat them around and these have obviously held up extremely well. They look just like they did when they came out of the box and I've, I've been, um, you know, I've taken these out days on end. Still absolutely perfect condition. All metal body, metal nozzles, metal grill covering the nozzle. In terms of ergonomics they're very comfortable they fit in your ear really nicely no complaints there they've got a little bit of heft but I, they're still what I would call lightweight you know we're all used to this now in this modern day and age all this high tech that's available to the manufacturers now we, we don't see a lot of badly built products anymore these MMCX connectors seem to be pretty good I've not had any problems with them whatsoever I really like the way that um, the MMCX sockets are color coded. You can see the blue one, blue ring here, which uh, means left, of course. Straight 3.5 millimeter plug, Velcro cable tie, nice tight, very tight uh, twisted eight core cable. Simple, very simple Y split, preformed ear guides that are not too stiff and comfortable on the ear and your polished metal MMC X connectors. Oh, I forgot to mention the price. These are just under a hundred dollars if I remember correctly, like $94 and $96. So yeah. When I actually when I first saw this frequency response graph, I thought Oh shit, that looks pretty awful. <laughs> I was, uh, you know, it, it looks a bit, a, a bit anemic in the base, and you obviously have got this pretty large um, accentuated area in the upper mids and lower treble. So I was a bit worried about that because I, I'm a bit averse to bright earphones. But it turns out the T1 is actually has a quite a warm tonality fairly balanced of course it does have that accentuated um, upper mids and lower treble area like the graph would suggest but overall the signature is still warm it's quite smooth the details are good the clarity is quite good in terms of bass uh, they're pretty punchy actually I, I like the bass on these a lot they're the transition between the sub bass and mid bass is quite linear. So even though 
the quantity of the base is not boosted a real lot. It's, it's still got a lot of uh, power there. You still get some nice sub bass rumbles going on. Yeah, pretty punchy. A little bit behind the upper mids in terms of the mix. And speed wise, kind of uh, middle ground on the speed, not too fast, not too slow. So they've got a nice natural decay on the bass. Uh, a little bit slow on the attack, so it's sort of a thumpy, thumpy bass, not a not a real uh, sharp attack on the bass notes, but pretty good overall, good control. Now the mid range, hmm, the mid range is pretty nice, pretty nice, nice and clean throughout the mids. Um, male and vo male and female vocals sound really nice on these. Um, if we I won't use the box, I'll pop the graph up here. Now because the lower part of the frequency response is quite linear for all the way from the sub bass up to where the upper mids begin, fairly linear, so uh, the lower mid range has a bit of thickness to it carried over from the bass, so that gives male vocals a nice fullness, a nice rich fullness. Um, the core mid-range is a has a little a little dip in it. Not really, not what I would call recessed. Actually, the mid-range in general sounds pretty forward. Sounds quite forward. And um, yeah, it sounds forward because both the bass and the upper treble are fairly close to neutral. Well, not exactly. I mean, the bass the bass does kick pretty pretty hard sometimes. Definitely not a bass head set, but not not too far north from neutral in in terms of the bass and the treble. The upper treble is definitely um, fairly neutral in quantity, so that sort of brings the mid range forward a bit. But what really brings the mids forward is that upper mid range boost and what that does in particular it makes vocals it really makes vocals pop so if you're a vocals fan this is a great option for you greater uh, vocal articulation good good uh, mid-range detail and resolution is pretty good as well in terms of the treble the focus is on the lower treble which uh, carries over from the upper mids fairly evenly. What this does, it gives a lot of presence, that's where the, the forward vocals come from. It does add a certain amount of detail, some clarity and a little bit of brightness, but it's it's not that high trebly kind of brightness. You, if you've, if you've uh, spent some time with IEMs, you'll know what I'm talking about. This sort of, you get a you get a lower treble or upper mid-range brightness which is different from the upper treble brightness and these don't have that upper treble brightness. Bad recordings, you will get some of that sizzle going on. Yeah, one the one thing that I didn't quite like about these is cymbals, crash cymbals. Not on every, not on every track but just now and then I would hear cymbals that um, the timbre is off, it doesn't sound quite right. And that's because of the, I think it's because of the four to six kilohertz region that's sort of pretty heavily boosted. And, and, it, and it just makes the, some parts of the treble feel a little bit hollow. Um, hard to explain really. And then we get to the upper treble, not a lot to say about that, it's, it rolls off fairly quickly, um, all the focus is, is on the lower treble. The upper treble is, the notes are quite dense, uh, they, they don't have a lot of roundness to them, so they're quite dense and stark, and not the most airy, not the airiest of, of upper trebles, which doesn't help with the sound stage too much, but the sound stage is still fairly reasonable because you've got that, mm, you've got a fairly, fairly tame quantity of bass, and although there is a bit of thickness in the lower mids, they're, they're generally quite clean. 
which helps the sound stage so they're not congested. The stage size is about average, but yeah, due to that upper treble fall off, um, it's, it's not expansive, it's not really open or airy, but pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so now let's get on to some comparisons here. We'll do the KB Ear Diamond, and the fact that the diamond is here next to this $100 earphone speaks for itself, because this is probably, in my opinion, it's still the best sub $100 IEM currently. It's got a very clean sound, it's got better clarity in the mid-range than the T1. Similar amount of bass, and what I really like about this though is the sweetness of its treble. It's got the sweetest treble, really, really nice. It's got a, the, a nice cable. The cable feels nicer, but it's, it's definitely not as robust as this one here. Um, which one is better? That will depend on your sound preferences. For me, ooh, tough one, tough one. I, I don't know. I do really like these. I enjoy these a lot. But that little bit of edginess in the lower treble, mm, that uh, comes now and then, not, not too much. Tough choice. I don't know. They're both really good. But like I said, 70 odd dollars. So if you're on a, on a tight budget, get these. You will not be disappointed. Here we've got the nice HCK NX7 Pro. These ones surprised me a lot actually. They turned out to be uh, better than I expected. A bit more bass than these, a bit, bit heavier in the bass, and a bit more recessed in the mid-range. But what these do really nicely is they have excellent detail retrieval, really good resolution, although the mid-range is recessed because due to the V-shape, very resolving earphone and you if you know if you've heard about these before you've probably heard people talking about the treble uh, I don't find the treble particularly bright myself I think it's just that the treble is well forward in the mix and that can be a little bit fatiguing but um mm, so more bass than the T1 Mids are more recessed, so the, the mids sit further back on here. So if you're a vocals lover, this one would be the one for you. The treble on this is well more forward than it is on here, especially the upper treble. But in general, it's, an, it's a nicer treble. It has a better treble timbre than this one, in my opinion. But um, these are about 100 bucks as well, which is a great deal. Okay, the Tin Hi-Fi... T4. It's got a horrible cable. In my T4 review, I said that the cable would probably get better with time. It does not. It does not. It's it's um it's just, just pretty nasty to be honest. But the earphones themselves are yeah, they're good, pretty good. Actually, there's a lot of similarities in the sound between these two. The main difference being that uh, upper mid-range is more boosted and more forward on here. They have a similar shape in the sound frequency, but it's yeah more forward on this one, which gives them that little bit of edginess. Here we have the Moondrop Starfield. The overall sound signature of the Starfield. It's a lot softer than the T1. It has a more feathered uh, presentation. The notes are more rounded. It's a real airy, ethereal, kind of light sound. Still got, still got nice vocal density and whatnot. Less bass than the T1. Mid-range is not as forward either as the T1. Um, and the treble on these is, I think it's mm, not any more forward, but the upper mid range, uh, the upper treble, the upper treble is very nice and airy. It's really light. It's nice and rounded. It sounds really open and uh, spacious. 
It's got these have got a really nice sound stage. My pick would still be for the Starfield, but that's really just personal preference. On technical terms, the T1 definitely plays in the same ballpark as the Starfield. I listen to a lot of instrumental music. I, I listen to a lot of vocal music as well, but not specifically vocals. I do listen to a lot of instrumentals, so for that reason, yeah, I, I, would, I would choose the Starfield. But of course, it is great to have both, because then you can mix and match depending on your, your music or your taste. My, my taste change from, changes from day to day, but what doesn't change is a good earphone. If it's good, it's good, you know? It doesn't, it's not good one day and bad the next. That doesn't really make any sense. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking. Obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm rambling now, so that's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button, uh, audio file style. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, see you later.